Philip here from Bundu Aviation. I'm the Zenith aircraft dealer for Southern Africa as well as the Whirlwind propellers and UL Power Aero engines. Welcome to our CH750 Stoll aircraft. Recently been finished. We're actually busy with the testing, flying and the proving flights at the moment. She's powered with a UL 350i engine. It's a full FADEC four-cylinder direct drive air-cooled engine. Fuel injected, common rail. So it's start and fly. No cold starts, no choking, no thermal um, fuel starvation issues, vapor locks, none of that, which may be an issue with a lot of different aircraft uh, engines. Propellers, that's the whirlwind prop, it's rated one of the best props in the world at the moment for performance. We got them for Jabiru, UL, Continental, Lycoming, Rotax, you name it, pusher, tractor applications from two to nine blades. Very interesting blades, very high performance, brilliant blades. Uh, then the aircraft itself, this is the Zenith CH750 Stoll version. It's a light sport or an NTCA aircraft in South Africa, meaning it's got a gross weight of 650 kilograms instead of the usual 600 kilograms. So we have a lot of pilots which are light sport aircraft pilots or national pilot licensed pilots which build the aircraft and then license it as a LSA aircraft or a PPL rated pilot that will actually register it and build it as a NTCA or non-type certified aircraft with a higher gross weight of 650 kilograms which makes it a very handy utilitarian aircraft from a gross weight point of view. Empty weights typically from 350 to about 380 kilograms depending on your equipment levels. Alright, let's talk about the airframe a little bit more. The CH750 stall. Now being the stall we still got the leading edge slats. We still got the full length flapper ons which is ideal for stall ops. Some unique things about the airframe of the aircraft is where the wing roots come together, the wings actually don't carry straight to the cabin. There is a, let's call it a detent in the cabin frame where the wings go. If you do the frontal shot, you'll see that the wings come together, then taper downwards, then we've got a complete glass roof, which gives you very, very, very good visibility when you're on steep turns and for traffic overhead. Obviously looking straight out the top and steep turns, you can see down and um, look at the terrain below you through the roof. Our tail, the rudder is an all flying rudder, meaning that the complete rudder turns. It has no stabilizing frontal section and then a rudder. It's a one piece rudder, so our crosswind component is 30 mile an hour, which is very high. Then also our stabilizer elevator, you'll note that the stabilizer elevator is inverted. It's not the right way around, theoretically. The reason for that being is that the stabilizer actually pushes downwards to keep a level flight. And what we do is, through Bernoulli's effect, we get a much stronger downward pull force from the elevator um, when it's inverted. Now, with a slat, the wing only stalls at about 32 degrees angle of attack. And if we put the elevator on the right way, the elevator would stall at 12 or 13 degrees. We invert the stabilizer elevator and then also put vortex generators on the trailing edge of the stabilizer. We get the elevator combination to only stall at about 23, 24 degrees and that helps us with keeping the nose pitch up and nose control, especially on the takeoff and landing phase. From a speed point of view, not the fastest ship around, but a lot of tricks that are available with the electric flap system and allows us to gain speed or lose a little bit of speed depending on your flap settings and your trim settings. Initial rigging also has quite a bit of an impact. Now, aircraft, standard Carlisle tires, which is a, a similar size to the front wheel, or I put the baby Thunder tires, it's a 21 inch tire for soft fuel operations. Uh, more dirt roads and that type of thing. And fuel tanks are normally 90 litres standard or 115 litres uh, long range. Or you can combine and put four tanks in for a total of about 210 litres. Engine options, we go from 100 to 160 horsepower. So you can actually put an 0320 in the sucker. Uh, engines, like homing, we've got firewall forwards for. Continental, we've got firewall forward for. Uh, Honda Viking, we've got firewall forward for. Rotex 912, 914, we've got firewall forwards for. UL engines from the 2.6, 350 and 390i series of engines, that up to 160, we've got firewall forwards for. 
Kamut and Jabru, we got five wheel forwards for. So the engine installations on these aircraft is very much your personal choice of what would you like to do and your budget constraints. Um, as a matter of fact, most of the kit aircraft, the engine and the power plant, five wheel forward is normally more expensive than the rest of the aircraft to the back. Avionics again, it is your choice. There's no stipulation on what avionics you need to put in. It is your choice. A lot of people find the EFIS panels very handy and in South Africa we use the MGL which is very popular. It's a local panel system, locally supported, locally uh, manufactured. So any hassles that you do have is very quickly sorted out. And bang for the buck has a very good pricing and package overall. Building the aircraft. A kit arrives uh, basically as a airframe kit and a finish kit. You assemble it then you have the complete aircraft without engine, avionics, electrics and engine. When you've, once you've built the airframe then you need to start with your avionics, your wiring and your firewall forward package. Now this is where it gets interesting. Lead times on a lot of the things can get long. Uh, things have changed in the world. Nobody has things on shelf. So be prepared to wait. You order avionics, three, four months. Engine package, propellers, doesn't matter. It has to be made on order and then it's only shipped and delivered. Nobody carries stock, so it can take time. Uh, from that, the airframe kit has everything in it to have a complete ready to fly airframe. Minus electrics, minus avionics, minus firewall forward. The challenge comes when it starts now with the engine and avionic selection and all your little custom things that you want to do which can make life interesting from a lead time point of view and a over the shelf or on the shelf supply of items sometimes you have suppliers that used to carry stock and now just don't have it anymore so you have to find new suppliers or change the item um, because of the cost impacts uh, but it's all part of the game that makes life interesting this is a basics, the Zenith CH750. Uh, we also got the CH750 Cruiser, which has got a, a new wing and a single strut with about a 25 mile an hour higher cruise speed, which is more for the A to B type flying, not uh, the adventure type flying that these tall aircraft are for. Any further information or you'd like to know about the airframe, you can go and look at www.zenithair.com or for Southern Africa, www.bunduaviation, one word, bunduaviation.com. For the airframes and the Zenith line of products on the engines, you can go and look at www.ulpowersa.co.za. And propellers, you can go and look at wellwindpropellers.co.za.